Liz, can you please start by introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about your role and your contributions to Super Longevity for those who don't know you? Sure. So my name is Liz Parrish and I'm the CEO of a company called BioViva and we work on gene therapies that regenerate cells. And what we're trying to do is find the perfect combination that will reverse biological aging, therefore helping you live much longer. Uh, the benefits of gen gene therapy is that it would be an injection that might last for 10 to 15 or more years. And uh, the idea is to shift this sick care system uh, to a health care system and use proactive medicine uh, that keeps you from getting sick. Uh, long before you would uh, start to accumulate the damage associated with aging. Yeah. And you have been in the field for quite a long time. You're an expert in your field. What are the most exciting developments and uh, discoveries, innovations you have seen over the last 12 months that will change the field? And how do you think will it impact the field of super longevity? I think the most exciting thing that I've seen in the last 12 months in my space is, well, actually just in the last few weeks, there have been two approvals of gene therapy, one for the use of Duchenne's muscular dystrophy and one for hemophilia A. And then within the last 12 months, I believe hemophilia B was also approved. So these are curative gene therapies for critical diseases. And they're great proof of concepts that uh, we'll be able to treat complex disorders like aging. So I think that now there are about 12 approvals in gene therapy for monogenic or single gene mutations. And that gives us, um, again, the, the strength and purpose to start working on complex disorders. Hmm, okay, 12 is actually more than I thought there were. I thought there were only three. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that's no, exciting. That's yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so the theme for this year's RADFest is meet your future face to face. Uh, what does the theme mean to you uh, for your work? And uh, why do you think it's important for RADFest attendees? Well, I mean, it, it has everything to do with, with meeting the people who are bringing in this proactive regenerative medicine to help you live longer. And, um, and you're going to be meeting people uh, who have partook in these uh, type of technologies and are sort of uh, trailblazing the future of uh, these innovative uh, medicines use. Okay. And your own topic is, of course, gene therapy, gene therapy uh, to address cell damage due to aging. Can you give us a kind of sneak preview already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, one of the things that they wanted me to do is to educate the audience on what's happening in gene therapy. Like you said, you thought there were only three approved gene therapies. I want to walk you through the process of gene therapy, what it is, how it works, and where it's been and where it's going. And then I will finish off by talking about several uh, people's data and what has happened after they have taken a gene therapy called telomerase reverse transcriptase. It's a gene therapy that lengthens the caps of the ends of the chromosomes, and that gives you more cellular divisions. And your cellular divisions are historically in 25 species uh, tied in directly with how long the species can live. So the hope is, is that with longer telomeres, you'll be able to live healthier and longer. Wow. You certainly do look healthier yourself, so and you have done it <laughs> as one of the therapies that you've done. But uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to to this information. Will you, be will you be sharing your own data as well, or? Yeah, absolutely. My data is one of the is actually several of the data points uh, on the graph since I have been the long the patient with the longest. Uh, amount of data collection on how my telomere length has uh, been progressing. Brilliant. Let's look at the next five years. What developments, innovations do you see happening uh, and how might this change the way we address aging in the future? 
Well, what you're going to see is the slow move into the regulatory systems of new and innovative drugs that target aging rather than a symptom of the disease that they might have otherwise uh, been addressing. So historically, uh, we have a reactionary healthcare system in which you wait until someone is sick, then that, that someone goes to the doctor and then um, they might have a condition such as Parkinson's. And then there is a cog cognitive issues associated with Parkinson's. Uh, there might be tremor issues and difficulty with coordination. And what medicine would do is try to treat some of those symptoms. Uh, they might try to reduce your tremors or increase your coordination or your cognition. But what the new medicine, uh, what we'll be doing is actually reversing cellular aging and then reversing your propensity for the disease uh, as it would be for a younger biological age. So for instance, it is it happens, but it's highly unlikely that you would get cancer, dementia, Parkinson's disease, or heart disease at the age of 20. So your risk level is super low at that age. It's super high at the age of 65. So by biologically reversing the age of cells, we want to take them back to your um, risk factor of disease and keep you from getting sick. But you'll see the slow progression of these uh, therapies entering the regulatory system. And they're going to enter the regulatory system way too slow. So I'm working on a, a, a regulatory path called best choice medicine that would give terminally ill patients the access to these innovative medicines that current legislation doesn't allow them to have. So hopefully we will also see the much faster adoption and known human data in these therapies, which will actually get them through the regulatory system even faster. And obviously one of the things that you just said is uh, relates to biological age. So I'm just very curious. Um, how do you say see the measurement of biological age changing yeah. potentially? It's not specifically your field, I know, but uh, I just uh, I think uh, the measurement of biological age is very very important for what we are all trying to to do and to achieve. Well, you know, you can affect something without measuring it, but the best thing to do is to be able to measure it. So there's two sort of aging clocks that I generally uh, describe. There's chronological aging, and that's getting older by years. And we want you to get over older by many years. Uh, and then there's your biological aging clock. And that's how uh, your, your biological risk for death and disease, disease first and then death. And um, we want to reverse the biological clock. Um, it turns out that there are 12 hallmarks of aging. That means there are a multitude of clocks of aging. So when we look at therapeutics, we are trying to reverse the biological clock on a specific marker of aging. We used to hope that you could just use one gene and reverse all of the biological markers of aging, but that probably is not going to happen. So, um, when we lengthen telomeres, uh, your telomere length is a biological clock. It's a complicated clock because your telomeres can stay short in a shortened state at the end of life for quite a while. Your cells go senescent and stop re uh, reproducing, but it is a biological clock. So reversing uh, the telomere damage and lengthening telomeres adds biological age to your life. Now, it's not all, the whole story. So there are also other clocks. Uh, there is the DNA methylation. A lot of people have heard about that. And um, that changes as you age. And there are therapies that reverse the uh, epigenetic age, but that doesn't extend lifespan that much. It makes a healthier organism. It extends lifespan, but you have to merge all of these clocks. So what you're going to be seeing over time is the merging of several biological clocks in order to reverse aging. So I know it sounds a little bit complicated and it is, but um, as we find these clocks or these measurements of cellular age and we uh, pinpoint therapies at them to reverse the cellular age specifically of that hallmark, that is how we will eventually cure all of aging by targeting all of them. And some therapies, just to put your mind at ease, actually will reverse several 
of the uh, aging mechanisms. They might reverse mitochondrial dysfunction, uh, telomere attrition, and uh, senescent cell buildup all in one swoop. Um, so, you know, don't, don't worry. Literally just help people work on the problem. And is there any uh, gene uh, or gene therapy that already stands out uh, that addresses quite a large variety of uh, different uh, diseases at the end of the day? Or well, hallmarks, yes. if you want. Right. So lengthening telomeres um, helps with mitochondrial dysfunction, which is one of the hallmarks of aging. Telomere attrition is one of the hallmarks of aging, and it directly affects that. And senescent cell buildup is also one, and it helps you know clear senescent cells to an extent. So that is a really promising therapy. And then we also look at other genes. We have five other gene candidates that also have a, an effect on aging. And then you've probably heard about um, there's also epigenetic reprogramming of cells. And so there are companies that are working on both the gene therapy and the small molecule approach to reprogramming the cell's epigenetic age. And so, you know, slowly uh, we're gathering uh, the genes associated with uh, reversing this da damage. And so getting them all together in one or two therapies uh, that you might take every five to 10 years is, you know, sort of the goal. Yeah. Is there any uh, any message, any final thought that you want to leave uh, potential Radfest attendees or readers and listeners with? Well, I just think that, you know, I can't wait to see you at Radfest. Uh, come and meet me. Um, I can't wait to listen to the presenters. There's always great information at RadFest. This year, George Church will be there, uh, the professor of genetics at Harvard. He's been a co-founder of my company since 2015. And um, he's amazing. Um, I, you know, I just... I just can't wait to be there. I hope that uh, you come and you meet all of these amazing people who are, um, like a friend of mine used to say, David Kekich, they're your best friends that you never knew you had. They're literally working uh, 24 hours a day to make your life uh, more amazing and give you more life. So come and meet us and uh, we can't wait to see you.